few spots, which is always so fun with the debuts. And we'll see how that looks. Of course, now we've got this really aggressive, actually G2-esque mid setup here with the pistols. Ooh. Waiting oh. for the attack to come in. A little hippity hop from Hooksy. Dupree gets him eventually. Make that two kills from Dupree out of the corner. Bomb thrown into the open. Spink's a little nervous about the Balk, but it's all good. Only Monacy left over. We have saw the pistol impact from him before as he finds Dupree's face on the fallback. Minute and 13 to make the impossible happen. There's a chance he catches Apex, but no, Apex creeps down that T ramp and with it ensures that Vitality pick up a CT sided pistol round win. Yeah, let's go Dupree. Look at that energy. Love that. Bring it. I mean, it's all in the setup. They've had a couple of rounds right now in this series where they've, they've kind of like read what G2 want to do. And it's wild because, you know, that means they know what Hooksy wants to do. And nobody knows that yet. You know what I mean? I know what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, that's just a way of tables aren't free. Yeah. You break it, you buy it. Glocks. Just a lot of Glocks. It is. It, 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 Inferno's an interesting map for G2. I think it's a map that they can be very good on and very bad on. Um, I guess that's just, that's most maps for G2, but they they specifically have like this, you know, Weapon X of Nico um, on Banana. But as was talked about on the desk, it was, you know, kind of 50-50. They had Alexi B playing B with um, Nico in, in some situations. And I don't know, they could beat almost any team, but they couldn't always consistently beat them. So it was never a top map for them. There was a period of time where they had a little streak going on, but didn't keep it up. And as for Vitality, they also had a long history of interesting periods of time on Inferno. When they had Nevera, that was when they were at absolute peak. They had it, they had the streak for themselves. They had Nevera opping on the map over Zaiwu. Zaiwu actually was happy to rifle B instead of play Arch. And they got shuffled around a lot from that perspective. Damn. They've also got a couple of Astralis players who, who really made a name for themselves in 2018 with the utility usage they brought, specifically to Inferno with all the HEs that everybody uses now. So a lot of very comfortable players in the server on the map that have all had very mixed results in the past couple of years. Not a map that you pick. It's a map that gets left for the third because it's one that a lot of teams are very good at. So hard to separate yourself from the rest. It's where it belongs. You should never take it away from us, please, dear Gaben. Gun round coming through from G2. Let's see if Nico can take that absolute performance that he offered us on Nuke. Transition into some early impact here for the T side. We get the apartments control between JKS and Hunter. Couple capable riflers. Nothing too frisky or nor risky from Vitality. Magus just sitting on Balk. Apex, a few jump spots here now that he's got vision all the way down Banana, so really nothing being seen. Ultra passive here from the CT side, and this is with three MP9s that they're using as well. Seems like they're content to just go for those crossfires on sight. Volley of nades comes over, and that's at the very least a little bit of brackets control. Now there's still time, of course, 40 seconds. Dupree hearing them getting closer, encroaching on Arch. That's the bomb down in the dirt. He's going to dive to the backside of sight. Quick rotate in from Apex. He's trying to attack this through the library. Still smoked off. Hunter grabs bomb. Nico's looking for the exit route. That's Dupree dead in sight. JKS out from Balk. Oh. Gunned down by the SMGs, but the bomb could still escape. Apex has been heard. Doesn't make a damn difference. More damage onto Nico. Smoking off the bomb. Makes it all too easy Ooh. for the French IGL. Yes, and they made a lot of money off of that with all the MP9 kills. So they shut that down. And the attack, it felt like it definitely could have went the other way. I mean, very close situations there with the kills, but ultimately the CT's winning that. That's just gonna bear tons of fruit, the amount of money made. Again, almost everyone dying to these very, very good MP9s. So Apex, I, I believe, uh, I believe Spinks two times uh, when he was playing on Ents, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna go ahead and check that. I go digging, bro. But um, this might be a position that 
is pretty alien to him. Oh, 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 Magisk. Oh, gets a straight shot into JKS. Good recovery here from Nico. Making sure that with just pistols, there's still a little life. Oh, oh, oh. more than a little. Excellent second Deagle kill. Dupree with the spam, though, kills his brother. And Sphinx, ooh, shows his hand with that flank. Now, luckily for Vitality, there's not much left of Nico. Tagged down to 14 health despite those two one deeks. It's nothing more than that. Hooksy, down easy. Vitality, keep the ball rolling. Yeah, so actually Sphinx played Inferno once this year. Once that's it? Once that's it, because it was Entz's band. So they they ha he has basically no experience on it. Now, Entz did play it a handful of times in 2021. I'm not even sure if Entz, Sphinx would have been on the team. Um, actually, no, he was. He was. He did play a few times with them. So that that's one thing that this, again, it might he might not actually have a preference, you know, when it comes to what side of the map that he's playing on. But he was playing on B when he did play on Entz. So... Would love to know from him how much he likes the map and if he wished that Ents played it and if he likes playing B. Yeah, well, if we're lucky enough to get James Banks with a Sphinx interview, get the man on it. Because he's kind of got to be the Nico, uh, you know, uh, of this side of the map. Damn. No easy feat. No, not at all. A couple bullets whizzing by towards Boiler. They've got a setup here in the apps, I think. Yeah. The old double setup. The left, right. Looks like Banana finally going to be uh, excavated here by G2. Digging for gold. And it's Spinks to throw himself right into the gunfight. Poor Hooksy shoots a couple bullets. Well, that's an open invitation for Spinks to rock his world and a smoke that goes down in front of Nico. So no trade, no equalizing kill as Vitality looks to be 5-0 up. It's a 5v4 to start. Yeah, and this is obviously all about utility right now. So they can go ahead and exec after the smoke. There is potential for the site to get re-smoked. Apex still has his full kit and a molly. So I don't know. I think this is not a winning round here for G2. They have to get three kills, enter the B site, and there's so many nades left over. I don't think they can even survive getting through a molly here. Yeah, A is pretty much their only option. The bomb's starting to walk up. Ooh, Magis, great grenade. JKS wow. and Hunter softened up. Like the underbelly of a turtle. This is already... They have eight seconds. Done. Bomb drop point blank like that. Monacy's going to try his absolute damnedest, but Zaiwu, just by shooting, simply gets Monacy to stutter step. Time expires. 5-0 in an instant. And that nade, it's like a checkmate pattern, right? The last line that they can get up is through the lane side, and the nade lands square on two people with, like, less than 20 seconds to go. So really good use of utility. Uh, and this is a very prudent round from Vitality with everything that's one of these players where it's like his opening attempt percentage is so high that it's almost worrisome. Because typically when we talk about entry fraggers, we talk about people who die a lot. And that's the last thing you want for Nico. But on the other hand, it's also his element, something that he's best at. So look at him go. He's already in the front of Banana, right behind a Molotov. Wow. People are throwing nades and falling back, and he's listening to it. Chance for Zaiwu, but a drop shot. Spinks gonna see the nade usage. Great flash from Apex. Good oh. double. Spinks four. Nope, just three. <laughs> Jump the gun. <laughs> a, a four, he had four. Yeah. Yeah. Hunter trades right in. He's got himself two kills. No, he had it lined up. I'm with you. <laughs> four. <laughs> Sorry, I read the script wrong. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna fall away. Now what do they do? They're kind of boxed in, but... Oh boy, he hit four. <laughs> nice one, man. He's off with the ace. Okay, bro. All right. They're stuck. Yeah, nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. It's either you go fight Zaiwu in sight... Actually, quite curious that Magisk is still kind of floating around over towards Library. Maybe they thought there was a timing there where one of them could have slipped out. Maybe it was just unconfirmed numbers. Alas. Oh, they're tormenting him. Yeah. He has 25 seconds, and they're on both sides, and he needs to get out. Don't mess with Monacy, though. That's true. Okay, the moment you start toying with this kid... Yeah, I mean, he does 1v4s on the B site. This is just a 1v3. And Magisk is still kind of floating back in spawn. 
Okay, looks like they're going to try to crunch him maybe after time. Uh-oh. Tough spot for Monacy. If he dies, he's left with 500 bucks, but that's his exit route. Run, my friend. Well earned. But even better, of course, is the 6-0 start from Vitality. Yeah. It indeed is. This is such a beautiful transition. I think uh, Vitality on this map, if there's one thing, it's a flash assist for sure to pay attention to. Four. <laughs> he had more bullets, dude. <laughs> Old A1S gets four. Yeah, that's true. Oh, boy. Tough spot. But, Saved off. Glue added. As soon as Nico put that pressure on, right, and then they pressed up and paused, Vitality had a whiff that maybe they're up here. They transitioned into retaking Banana super quickly. Hard timing to read. Yeah, so far, great showing from Sphinx. Doesn't look like a guy who's played this map once. Yes. But, uh, you know, is only four and two. Yeah. Just one 4K. <laughs> I wish you made mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Apex gets smoked. Nico. Just jumping around. Just got that nasty deagle. Spink's gonna have to pick up the slack here. Hoping to hold the line. This angle is beautiful when you're holding on to lane control. Oof, nice flash. Good flash, damage. Yeah. Hooksy's still taken down quite low. Op shot from Zaiwu connects. JKS on short side. And Zaiwu just playing the pillar. Sees the muzzle flash. Confirms that Monacy's up in apartments. And Zaiwu, damn, he's hanging on for dear life. Monacy will get the op trade. Two versus two ensues. And Magisk, well, he'd love to press through this smoke, but they'll have to go for the boost. And even then, because the smoke goes so deep, Ah, they've still got a little vision to work with. Easy pickup versus Nico, in fact. Oh, oh, making a double. Magisk, wonderful. Vitality, yeah. flawless. Yeah, that was, that was great. I mean, he has him locked in. He has to leave default one way or the other. And they could watch lane and just sit there, but that's so unlikely. So, not often you see that boost work out that well. But um, not surprised that it does with Magisk on top. Apex seems like he's surprised, but, you know, you poke Nico, you're asking for trouble. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you sometimes. No matter what team you are, Nico will, will win banana sometimes by himself. It's going to happen. Proceeds now, you know, playing alongside. Can't keep up to Yabby? That's one thing. Can't keep up to Nico. It gets obvious. Wait, which one's more surprising? Yeah, in hindsight, <laughs> bad analogy. <laughs> Gabby is the goat, though. Double boiler setup, op included. Zaiwu ready for the porch peak. Oh, the jump. Hunter just puts himself on a silver platter. Debris like, yeah, I'll take that, thank you. Retracts back from Boiler, so again, two players into the A site. Magis kind of freed up to do as he pleases, and the CTs drop a smoke front banana. Spinks and Apex hanging on. That rotations are brutal right now. Everything is in place, in time. Doesn't mean you can't go B. And look at this, another re-aggression. As soon as they think they're at the top of banana, they're 100% right about it. Spinks will fall back off of this to disengage. They see the bomb, yep. but the ball's in their court, right? G2 have to make a move now. Some of their utilities starting to come out. They've got two smokes to go. No Molotovs to stop them. And I think Dupree with the last smoke for the CT side is actually on the other side of the map. So funnily enough, this would have been a decent round to, to hit the B site now, but they'll now run into Dupree. Drops his smoke preemptively. Oh, Monacy's looking to be scoped up on that pit, though. Still times it nicely done. Dupree gets two players off of this. Eight seconds left. Point blank. Off fight. Oh, Monacy. We're on. Yes, we are. A little bit of clutch sprinkled in for an attempt at G2's first round win. No! Apex tries to jump across. Lethal mistake. You do not survive a clash versus the kid. And now Monacy gets into the pit. It's him versus Spinks. A kit on the CT side, but a white oh. hot on Monacy. Like thunder. No way.
Another clutch, and it starts with that Zaiwu flick down. The Even mallet better. drop into this. Oh my god. Starts with clearing Dupree off of his multi-kill. Get dunked on. And this shot, who do you think you are? No one crosses for free. No! Let that be the fire that ignites G2. Let's see if we can get some kind of a comeback going on this T side. So far this series, blowout after blowout, and this one looked to start with a similar trend. Financially cannot afford to get hard reset here and now. That's the door blown off the hinges, thanks to Monacy. Let's see if he's provided enough magic create some momentum. Just silence across the map every time that off shot rings off. Ooh, a little peek there for Dupree. Short side. Very much open. Yeah, he sees a lot. I think we saw Monacy setting up for a uh, library smoke. I think maybe that'd be enough to pull somebody over towards the A site, but Dupree's going to get stuck between the layered smokes. Well, the thing is that, you know, that, that information goes both ways once it's given up. So they pause a little bit, but we're at the 30 second mark. And it have to be money for Magisk. Wow, knife out. Dangerous game. Hooksy will get killed. Dupree sees nothing in mid just yet. They're able to trickle down from the balcony and look at that save call in an instant. Man, that's that's a pretty sick transposition because it looked like they were setting up for an R trap with the utility they were using. And then they instantly went into halls as a quick transition and decided to pop out and ran. And I think that that's actually pretty hard to read, right? Based on the info you had, you know, but they did have to make a decision. And the flash was really great from JKS as well. That just did the job. Let them get a little bit of space. Oh, that's huge. Two in a row off the back of that. Uh, was that a 1v4 or a 1v3? Because it, Dupree died in the pit. Was there another player on this team alive? Dupree's, I, uh, oh, no. I no. think it was him. Just, yeah, 1v4. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that bomb sure is big. Yeah. Nico won't get to save, but... Hell, doesn't matter. Consecutive round wins, three alive. Yeah, that's what G2 is looking for. Yeah, still early in the half. Maybe it, it does matter a little bit, I guess. Yeah, but fair, fair. Uh, not that much. But yeah, that bomb is. What was it in, in library from the B site? Somebody died with yeah. two HP. <laughs> yeah. Insane. <laughs> oh man, that was a ruthless change by Valve, and hilarious. So I respect this. Just nobody asked for it, yeah, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it genuinely has that effect. You know, yeah. so fun stuff. Not fun if you're Nico in that case, but could be worse. At least your team's winning rounds. Point blank. Oh, Nico and Hooksy rattle off some shots. It's Apex and Sphinx dead to right. Dupree delivers one, but I mean, he just needs to try and escape, and they're going to come hunting him down. A pack of hounds on the front of this site, and Dupree, ooh, cheeky, slides up. Oh, wow. Wow. For a second there, JKS honing in on it. Must have seen something called for everybody to spam that smoke. And with it, it's three consecutive from G2. So if you thought this game was going to be the blowout, looks like we've got a close-knit affair on our hands. Yeah. That's three straight off the clutch. And I like how Dupree, he kind of... He, he, there's a one-way there, but he just offhanded that smoke as he was falling back. It wasn't perfect, and he still almost used it. But I think Hunter kind of just sprayed while he was sort of blinded. Oh, wow. Hooksy okay. from behind. That's his first kill of the map, by the way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the B site gets overrun. So, two weapons saved from Vitality. Still a decent amount of money back behind them as well, so I feel like this next round still has a little life left in it. How much do they invest? 
Just a few tidbits here, actually. So, makes sense. Keep everybody above the $2,000 mark. Three rounds in a row from G2. Let's see if Zaiwu gets unleashed a little. Right now, he's waiting for something to go down in middle. Starts to pull back with Dupree. So that is very much these rifles split. Magis comes around the corner of Wood. Hooksy's tucked on the half wall. Oh, Nico. Gonna catch him on the fallback. Sphinx, just the deagle. Mm, but he's not able to follow suit with a second. Now, unfortunately for Apex, he's got Nico getting closer. Trajectory of the nade gives wind of Apex's position. Dunk. Oh, nice one. 40 damage. Great frag and a fallback as well here from Nico. Remember, though, Op's still in play for the Wu. That's true. And he's left in a position where he won't move. There is an outside chance they, they run in his direction, but it looks like, actually, he's, he's peeled off to Arch. Maybe they gamble towards the B-side and wait and just save this for the next if it doesn't end here. But with Nico posted on this corner, it's not exactly clear what G2 want to do. They'll throw their wrap smokes, but the bomb goes back to B. I don't think a rotation's coming down. They're going to run into the stack. This is like Vertigo. Oh, man. Unless Hunter still has time to just wrap into the A site and bring it all back. Now I think they go back because, yeah, yeah Hunter wraps the whole site. Yeah. So Nice. Little insurance policy. Yeah, that's good. They did that with a lot of time remaining, so it wasn't it wasn't like Hunter was just using an aggressive lurk to flank B. Yep. It was an insurance policy. You know what they say. Buy insurance, burn your own house down. Is that a... Yeah. Is that advice, or...? I, just... I think it's just an expression. Oh, okay. I don't know, Anders was talking to me about it earlier. I see, okay. We'll keep an eye on him. At least the M4 can be grabbed here from Dupree, so uh, whatever freebies you can get away with, grab them. But Monacy may just continue to rack up the costs. Do it. He's just readying it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> With the molly as well. It's overkill here on Dupree. Look at this. They're going hunting. They want this off. But you got to be cautious when you're chasing down Zaiwu. Ooh. Missed chance at a second. Oh, jabate it. <laughs> Monacy popping off with that. We've got G2 very much in this game now. He's charged up. Damn. That awesome. really did make a huge difference. Just oh. that 1v4. I'll take back-to-back -back blowouts if it means a tight third map. Yeah. Shaping up for a good one. That's why you called it Goat Furno. Nice! Let's go! That's some good energy. I think about what it would feel like to come back from that first whooping on Vertigo. Absolutely. Yeah. That had the, it had the makings of a 2-0, considering they're going into their not their map pick, but yeah, they're very much impressed over on Nuke. But then you get a godlike performance out of Nico on Nuke. So think about how much he's just individually invested. The effort, the energy. Stars don't like to lose. A little bit of banana control given over. A little timidness here sinking in versus Vitality. Try to throw the smoke out, see if it keeps Hooksy at bay, but it's a waiting game. And there's plenty of time to wait. Yeah, pretty effortless now as they've taken over top banana. They've had some great reaggressions where they've got their kill, stopped the attack from coming on, but they, it seems like they're getting farther and farther from that goal line every time now. G2 having their way with the map. Starting to feel pretty good. Oh, Yo. little X Factor. Well, that's lined up perfectly from Apex. Frustrating moment for Hooksy. He did get one through a smoke on Banana, so. Yep, his one and only. It gives and takes. His one and only, yeah. Appropriate lean as well here from Vitality. Pre and Apex layering towards spawn side. We get the uh, mollies over the top. Sphinx going to be hanging on. Actually gets hit by a frag, so softened up somewhat, but 13 seconds. That could very well be the end of G2 on this B-site attempt. Sphinx strikes one down to pre perfect boost. Bomb drop, Sphinx succeeds, and G2 fizzle out here on the cusp of that B hit. Monacy hanging on to the AWP with the save. Tons of money still for G2, not oh. the end of the world, but 
Nice to see Vitality with a round win. They had me wrapped around their finger right there. They took Banana so easy and effortlessly. It was like, wow. I mean, they're just going to be able to exec wherever they want. And then it comes down to 10 seconds again, and you're like, whoa, I guess this is actually not a great position. So not sure what delayed their time so much. If it was their own, if it was just them self psyching themselves out, or if it was Hooksy dying maybe at the top of Banana when they were trying to make some plans happen. That could have been a tilter that changed it. But either way, it's always nice when you're on the other side of that. And you see the other team is a little bit fragile. The same sneak, actually, from Nico, and he eats at the top of the flash, and he Damn. still gets the kill on Apex. Goes back. Actually lost his vision in the smoke and still came back. But that frag... Oh, it gets Hooksy instead. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy! <laughs> Just a thousand ways to die with Hooksy. That was for Nico. That 100% was for Nico. I don't think they knew that Hooksy was hurt in the back. Just you there. can't make this up. Just, uh, yeah, magnetic to death. <laughs> oh man that is that's comical that is comical crazy now they'll march quietly back up towards brackets at 50 seconds i think we got to pay close attention to the clock now but this site is pretty staffed See if they have any trouble here. Lots of grenades left over as well. Moto smoke comes down. A little rap getting set up. Looks like Dupree's finally gonna get his arch side fight. Hunter kills Magisk. Oh, nice. They hold the line. It's gonna be 20 seconds on the low HP'd Kovacs. And Nico not gonna get around that corner. Unfortunate, but superb. Zaiwu. Nice little flick into Hunter. Gives vitality number nine. Yeah, very clean. Starts off with some uh, grenade and util antics at the top of Banana. And I actually wondered the amount of times that they pushed Banana when they could have just thrown HEs, uh, you know, why they weren't doing that more. But they started to bring that in. And yeah, they are catching a lot of G2 players at the top of Banana in this case. So now we'll finally see a save out of G2. I think I think after a four-round streak, they lose two and are out of money. Hooksy on the util. Nico as well. posturing going on, but and they leave the apartments, so clumping together here. Power of the unarmored deagles, perhaps. Couple sets of Kevlar, of course, so put the right weapon in the right hands, you could have a problem, but it's been a little while since we've seen Zywu with this B-Sight. He's going to do it all on his own. Vitality chasing ghosts over on A. Yeah, there's no one there even putting pressure on it. But they'll start to make their way back over, it looks like. So, and Zai was playing an interesting spot. I mean, he can get smoked out in this position. He's not going to play committed. And I think one of the worst things you can do is give an off to pistoling players if they overrun it. So, look for his opportunity. Misses it. Good flashes. Right utility comes down. Oh, that's a nice shot through the coffin here from Zaiwu. Hooksy up and above the coffins. Sphinx finds the lineup. Hooksy goes challenging through. That is a bug on a windshield, as far as Zywu is concerned. <laughs> Hooksy gets slapped aside. Sit down. And JKS follows suit. He will take one with him, that deep shot towards CT. But, you know, considering what they'd had to work with, Vitality happy with that. Yeah, so we're moving into one final round. And, I mean, I feel like you you have to mention the Monacy won't be for again with the G2. We'll see if they can get that last round just... Added to the tally. One final attempt on this offense. Daiwu just floating in the open. Now concern for the alt peak, but those two alt players up into the apartments. Magisks set the floor on fire. And Hunter feels that call to action. Met by a smoke grenade, they'll cool off for the time being. Nico doing his own thing here. Unfortunately for him, he's working with the Galil. But so is Hooksy. So they're equals. 
A little bit of patience would make the CTs very insecure here. They have a huge arch cap and timing, potentially. It's still smoked off, but they don't know about it. So the two Danes on A in the pit, ready for a Hulse pop if that comes their way. But they've left this open for some time, so they'll start to move back. Swapping out positions here. A little bit deeper on the arch side. Zywoo's ready point blank. Apex still kind of floating between Zywoo and Sphinx. Not sure if they should be concerned with the B hit. But smoke goes down. Oh, timing could have been favored to Zywoo, but no sir. Dupree gets dinked, still alive for only a second longer. Zywoo trying to find those spam shots. Magis cutting off bodies from inside the pit. 20 seconds to the clock. No additional kill here from Magis. Modesty low, but bomb is down with that retake needed final round of the half and they've got these deep positions sunk in between nico and jks monacy is low cindiary could be set towards him and then they've got to get this ball rolling flashbangs go high smoke blocks off pit so that's meant to push them forward apex tries to jump up but there's a little gap on the left side Sphinx finds the way over top of the box, but again, two players deeply rooted inside that pit. By tapping bomb, they peek. Sphinx with the first one. JKS back around the corner, and time is again the issue. G, uh, hell of a highlight. Got them four rounds off the back of that. An invigorating round win for G2 to pick up. And then, as we saw, that fifth one as well just added right as the uh, first half came to an end. This would not be the very first 10-5 half on Inferno to be brought back for a victory but G2 better keep it clean in this pistol or else it is a daunting task. Yeah, it, in fact it is. So yes, it looks like what the desk predicted is true. That Hooksy will be, wait, hold on. No, hold on a second. Are they stacked in emo? Okay, yeah. so probably Nico with Monacy on top, if I'm not mistaken. And then Hooksy over here. It's a pistol round, so anything can happen. Okay, so Nico on top. Nobody stands on Nico. Yeah, that makes sense. I was Nobody like, wait, stands it, on Nico. Yeah, yeah. Nice clutch kid, but come on. Yeah, seriously. Zaiwu managed the cross. Nico. Dangerous game of whack-a-mole. Oh, but he comes up. Pops Zaiwu when the mole fights back. Modesty's not going to get out of that corner, unfortunately for him. We'll see if Nico can pick up the slack. Sphinx has managed to get into pit, but look at that bomb. It just leaves. Dupree's trying to size up the other side of the map. He's going to get a fight versus JKS. Insta headshot. Chance at a second. Oh, Hunter can't manage. And now they do kill Sphinx. So, I mean, the saving grace, the silver lining, is it's an insta rotation. The bigger problem, bomb plant, 3v2, post here for Vitality to get an early 11th round win. Yeah, they got some excellent post plant spots. And, you know, a quarter of this bomb is going to be gone by the time they get up here. Plus, they have to make noise on the way. And Hooksy has one kill. So he's trying to set up Nico, making a ton of sound inside of the apartments. Just Jesus. gets deleted by Magisk point blank. And now Nico would have to ace in this pistol or else Vitality walk away with that easy number 11. He gets up into the apps. Magisk walks back. That'll be the end of him. But time decides ultimately. And so Vitality, six round lead. Yeah, this hill is getting a little bit too high to climb. But I mean, it's still CT side that they can look forward to. We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, maybe. I mean, there's always a chance to eco as well. G2, definitely one of the better teams to have pistols in their hands. So let's see how much they put together. And I've always loved G2's kind of eco setups. This time, of course, it's going to be Hooksy calling instead of like Nexa or Alexi. I think they both have brought some good force ups and eco rounds strategies to the roster in the past. But now they're just chock full of ideas, having run through three IGLs in the past year. So let's see what the Danish version of that is. As even though they don't have that much to invest in, they sure as hell have the expectation that they can do this. And it is actually a force. Behind this M4 of Hunter. Dire straights ahead. No connection there from what can be a very deadly deagle. Pre up first. They carve out controlled banana, so that's entirely theirs already, but there is a potential Zaiwu versus Nico fight here that could open up the floodgates for the B bomb site. 
Meanwhile, justifiable four-man stack inside A. Hooks is not bringing the kills, but if he's bringing the calls, it's just up to his teammates to deliver. Smoke fades in front of him. Dupree's honing in closer. Flash on the feet of Hooksy. Goes for the Monacy fight. Insta-dink. Sets up Hooksy. Oh, he can't get the kill. Zaiwu glocks him in the face. Little gap out from the balcony. Apex tries to chase into the site. He'll go, finding JKS. Nico is nowhere to be found at this point. There is still Hunter. That M4 pops Ooh, three okay. kills. Players in the right positions. G2, rob it back. They're all distractions the entire time. This golden spot inside of the graveyard. That was the final nail, and it was the best gun of the round for them to hold it from. So that's it. Hunter puts together the three-piece. You know, he likes those high-action 3Ks. Yeah, and they, they come through with the four-man stack. Ooh, that's a sigh of relief. Yes, that could have got very hairy. Exactly what they'd hoped for. Lose pistol, screw it. Good chance, right back. Hooksy dies to Apex. No shame in that. You said he's as good as Monacy. <sighs> Going for to go. Clip it. Damn. Speak of the devil. Uh, oof. Can't manage. Yo, hold on now. We've got a gun in the hands of space. Yikes. This is not what they need. Okay, Nico's alone in B. Two locked up on lane side, so they can go and overtake mid if they want to, or just chill. I mean, there's two options here. Either way, it's actually a very good position for Vitality. There's just not a lot of man power here for G2. But the more clues they get, the farther they can get. It's just that they've got to keep an eye on A because that's still always a threat. Vitality are waiting for the search to come out. This actually thinned out. Like if we pause the map, right? They were two in pit. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of thinned them out a little bit. But they start to inch towards the B site. You go... Just taking a quick glance at Banana. Sphinx. Oh, gets the better of him. Oh, man. With the one gun there. Nico oh, just loses that huge. duel. Yeah. You drop that M4. Suddenly, Zaiwu again, also easily toppled. Now it's going to have to be Hunter and JKS running at this quickly up Banana. They've got players zoned back sight. Dupree. Oh, he's got a little bit of cover, but they could still line up, and they don't. There's a big question mark about where JKS has gotten off to. Dupree's on coffins, Magisk back site, the Danes locking in this bomb site, and now Zaiwu brought back to the action. Three man peak and a huge recovery for Vitality. Oh, that is a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, a couple of failures there. Just open up the CT spawn, and with so much time remaining, it's very hard to make the correct play no matter how much time. I mean, Vitality, they have them locked up, right? This is there's no good move to make. You can't leave the A site. You have to worry about B at the same time. And either way you go, you are in a losing position. It's a 4v1 basically in either situation. So Hunter starts to lean over. Here was kind of Zaiwu's right-hand man. You know, if you were going to get the, the two-player highlight reel, it was Zaiwu and Dupree, occasionally Magisk. This evening, you've got the four-man core just popping off. Unfortunately, Hooksy with another map struggling, and JKS not able to keep up to the other three, so... Yeah. Still time to kind of turn that around. It is Counter-Strike after all, but it shouldn't be coming in a round like this. Armored pistols sprinkled around the camp of G2. 5-7 tucked close, goes back, nice flash, but Apex even blind. Just smothers out Hunter top banana, and they could have transitioned into the commit, but Nico was waiting with that deeg. No movement on the A site. It's very much Nico alone. <laughs> Who's on my head? How did that... I think he hit some clipping, actually. I think Apex was on the wall above him. Oh. Couple, you know, couple steps forward and... Smell my feet. That's funny. He did a Mario jump. There it is. Easy pickup. Open yeah. B bomb site. Not that they know it. But soon to be found out, of course. Magisk and Apex will go scouting in for information. Yeah, even if it isn't, right? It's Nico dead. It's a core part of the site. And uh, now the bomb can start working back. So they've done a good job scouting. They get the kill that's important. They open up the round, and now they're in critical territory here in the series. Burgeoning on 13. Looking to close out. 
And to recount the last two maps, been a stomp both ways. At first, it looked like there was just no reconciling it for G2. They just looked really bad on Vertigo compared to versus Big. And then Vitality on Nuke it was a map that, again, I, I'd said it during the game. A very impressive win for G2 to pull it over Vitality, who haven't changed in IGL, haven't changed two players. They've just picked up an upgrade, and that guy played well. You know, Sphinx was really good on Nuke, and they still kind of decimated them. Controlled outside, no problems. And that's kind of Hooksy's best map so far, where he actually had critical kills. He's got the, like, lowest multi-frags of anybody, you know, in Tier 1 right now. And that's that's going to be an issue. But at least on Nuke, we saw him with the capability to get like, impactful round-changing kills. For sure. And just enough, right? Uh, switching over to Inferno, it's feeling like more of Vertigo. A little bit discombobulated, kills are a problem. And I think we need more sample size again. And if it wasn't for a stray bullet to the top of Banana, he would be 0 and 18 right now. Right. Not that 1 and 18 is really a saving grace, but... It's seen the guy he killed. Tough struggle. What a challenge he knew he was taking on. And Apex just mows down. The two players on the arch side. Flawless round coming out of Vitality. Feels like they are simply skating into victory lane. However, there will be guns between them and the finish line. Soon to be bought up by G2. Here it is. Last chance saloon. No op and play for Monacy. The rifles they need, sitting on a single incendiary. Don't have any kits here, so kind of have to play for frags. Maybe a touch more aggressively. Although we'd be met by some aggression themselves, actually. The quick boost to take out Nico. Damn, huge that is, scalp. Yeah, that is a huge amount of leverage. They assembled into that so quickly. And you've got Hooksy on this backside. Yeah. He's got to deliver here. He's got to stop them from moving in. He's got a health advantage over Apex. Just runs out. Grenade in hand. Lucky to even be alive. And he still just dies as Apex swings with the Deeg. Picks it up off Nico. And where has the defense gone? It is over. Round 15 locked in for Vitality. Nico goes down first and foremost. Just, you know, Zaiwu weaponized on that fast boost. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for Hooksy, I mean, kind of caught sleeping as he jumps into the open there. Didn't think Apex would be in the little pit. Yeah, no idea that that was coming. Fatal error. They've been moving fast. So, kind of a somber save here. Most of G2's rounds have been in the first half. Again, off that crazy, crazy 1v4 from Monacy. But that's just about it. Oh, even JKS scared by Sphinx as he flies down off the bow. This is that fast boost. That was sick. Got dinked and still recommitted for the second one. And unfortunately for Hooksy, not a good look here. Nice double <laughs> deagle kills from Apex. A deflated looking G2. All right, no. that's obnoxious. <laughs> but I like that. Okay. La, la. La, la, la. <laughs> it's just no rhythm, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's not even witty. What range? It's not. It's just. C'est la la. Tough one. Double MP9. Triple Ds. Talk about blowout city. Three maps back and forth between these two teams. They win each other's map picks in dominating fashion. Inferno looked like it was going to have some life on it once Monacy and Co. strung together those four rounds. They're going to try to hang on, fighting down, and Hooksy's got himself one kill because Zaiwu just TK'd, robbed him of a second. <laughs> and at least it's a 5v3 and a little bit of map control. Not to mention no bomb right now for Vitality. They'd have to double back, and that makes things weird. So maybe a little life left in G2 here on Inferno. Or they simply lose a 5v3, which would probably be an even worse look. Apex, Dupree, and Apex again offer those kills, but still, no bomb, oh. and maybe no bomb needed. Hunter going to have to come through with a one versus two on four points of health. And he might go to B when they go A because they still have someone at the end of halls. Dupree sitting and waiting patiently for a re-aggression as they cannot find Hunter, but I don't know if they run into him now. 
Apex can clear out bracket, and then this will allow Dupree will, to get back to mid, and this could be the last round of the game here for G2. It looks like they've reasoned it out. Oh, man. 3B5. Whittled down to the 2v1. Hunter at least is able to grab an M4, but, I mean, this is going to have to be some superb rifle work. At least Dupree goes down easy. Stellar performance out of Dupree and Spinks this map. 22 kills, 21 kills. Everybody else pulling their weight. Hunter, he'll have the element of surprise. Dupree holding this angle from back sight. But that's going to be Apex to pop up and whip around in a moment's notice. And he never 